undoubtedly there are still those that are going to hang on to that for a lot of different reasons. There's a lot of variables that come to play. They're going to hang on to that, that registration on their form as a Democrat. That's fine. That's great. We're all conservatives, no doubt about it. But the perspective that I have, and, and the, the, the point is, yes, our government is too large. That, that's the basic, uh, is supposed to be uh, a fundamental principle of to be a conservative. But I think a lot of people are missing the point. And that is simply, without a doubt, we are having Marxian socialist ideology shoved down our throats. And they kind of think that one of two things. We're either too stupid to realize it or we're too weak to battle it. That is not the case and it cannot be the case. When you hear grassroots level, this is, you've heard that through, throughout the years, this is one of those cases when the heart and soul of the conservative movement has to rise up and take a stand and say, no, we are not. And it is effective. Our voice is not as loud as it needs to be. It will grow louder, but it can be very, very effective. Now, you've sat and heard all these candidates speak about Boren. And yes, he backed Obama 81% of the time during his first six months of, of this socialist administration. And yes, since Nancy Pelosi was ushered into the, uh, the seat of the uh, Speaker of the House with young lad Boren's help, he has voted with her 94% of the time. Yet, when this health care bill, st bill started to go a little bit south, who was the first guy out in the media claiming the blue dog status? The blue dog is an extinct critter. By their own definition, the only thing they can agree on is fiscal conservative. The blue dog no longer exists, and it hasn't existed for quite some time. And I wrote an article about this, and it was actually it was, uh, published on Canada Free Press, I believe. It was The Unfettered Truth. Watch out for jumping libs. This was two days before Bourne jumped out there because I saw what was happening, and lo and behold, how many times have you heard Blue Dog in the press? They will make an attempt to make political hay out of this, claiming to be. Do not let that happen. Nobody can make political hay out of that. If they were Blue Dog Democrats, like my grandfather's Democrats, we wouldn't be in the debt that we are in today. I've called them Blued Hogs. They're blued because they're choking now us blue, and they're hogs because of all the pork that they choke us with. That cannot be allowed to happen. My experiences, my life experiences, my education, I understand what Boren's role is supposed to be as a representative and on his committees, on the uh, House Select Armed Services Committee. I know what he's supposed to do. And I guarantee you, it's not to pick out items here and there to bring back to special little things here in this district. That is our money. It is our money. What he does with our money should come from us. We have the final say. Now, what's interesting is that this August recess is, that's coming up, the young lad Boren is not holding a single town hall meeting in this district. That was confirmed by his office today. He's not man enough. And I've called, I'm the only candidate that has called Dan Boren out. I was interviewed on the KTOK, the Mark Shannon show, for the second time the other day. I've called Dan Boren out. I will set him right anywhere. I don't care the venue, the time, or the place. I will debate the young man. I have no problem with that. He will not do it. He will not come back to his district and be held accountable to the people that he is supposed to represent. Y'all can probably tell that I'm kind of a little bit of an in-your-face type, type of person. We have had representation in this area, District 2, after the redistrict, even, they've been just a little bit meek. That is not what we need. To turn back this socialist tide, you have to go against Pelosi. I call it the rope. The rope is available, and they think we're supposed to hang ourselves with it. That's Reed, Obama, Pelosi, and Emmanuel. We need to start giving a little bit of rope back 
We have to, generally speaking, and I always hate to, to say things like general because sometimes you can get a little bit of trouble. Well, I'll take a little bit of trouble. That's fine. Conservatives are a little bit slightly meek. They're, they're slightly, they, they're not an in-your-face type, type of bunch. We don't like confrontation. The liberals understand that, and they have taken advantage of that for many, many years. Bless my mother's heart. She has told me many times, no, don't do that. And I said, no, I can't. I love my country too much. I cannot allow them to keep shoving this down our throat that we do not want. And I guarantee you the majority of the voters in District 2 do not want this. They do want to know the truth, and we have to tell them the truth. And that takes resources. Have I got plenty of time left? Okay, great. Uh, let, me, let me kind of jump a little bit forward here. In the history of American elections, there's, again, in generally speaking, there, there, there are two types. Elections where the issues define the election, and then elections where the election d defines the issue. This is a case. 2010 is a watershed event in American history. The issues will define this election. We cannot allow the rope regime to define issues for it. The issues will define the election. And at stake is nothing less than the integrity, the culture, and the character of America herself in this 2010 election. Make no mistake about it. These people are tearing at the fabric of Americana. The America that you and I, every single one of us, many of us have, would give our lives for. That's a powerful statement. And I get chill bumps when I think about that. I have lived, I have seen, and I have experienced the goodness of America. That American exceptionalism. And I will never apologize for what I hold very dear and close to my heart. And that is the belief, and I know it to be true, that we are an exceptional country. And others look to us, and they always have, as they said, as that shining beacon on a hill. And now, when freedom-loving individuals around the world look, what do they see? They see a nothingness. They see a void. That, ladies and gentlemen, is morally wrong, and that is straight coming straight from the rope bunch that are wanting to hang ourselves. Thanks. I, I do have one little announcement. I, as you, I am the only candidate. I am taking Dan Bourne on, and I will call him out, and I have written articles with his name in it explaining these situations. The National Republican Congressional Committee told me three months ago when I was looking for help from them, they said, yeah, we'll help you if it looks like after the primary you might be able to beat Dan Bourne, and then it's a might. I said, well, what about PACs? They said, you won't get a PAC to support you until after the primary. I said, okay, thanks. And I hung up the phone. Do you all know of America's Tea Party? It was held down in Dallas. 37,000 people, 37,500 people showed up. The sponsor of America's Tea Party was a political action committee called Revolution PAC. On August the 15th, they were holding an event in Dallas, Texas. Ann Coulter is the keynote speaker at this event along with Mike Church and uh, Andrew Wilkow. At that event, Revolution PAC is announcing their first endorsement for the midterm election of 2010. I am that candidate. We have three more PACs lined up that we will be making announcements on before the end of September. I'm the serious candidate. You can understand this is my passion, this country that we love so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to do this the rest of my life. I love hunting and fishing, just like he said in my bio. I love southeast Oklahoma. I can live anywhere in the world. I choose to live in southeast Oklahoma. Thank you, and God bless everyone.